Hey guys, what's going on? It's Space Cowboy here. Welcome back to the channel. I have another video for you guys today. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys could, please make sure to drop a like down below. It helps the channel out a lot and makes a massive difference. Also, make sure to subscribe if you're new, if you want to, to receive more Dallas Cowboys content from me now and in the future. So, today I wanted to talk about how I felt about the state of the team, as well as just a couple other things. So, the first thing I want to address is what are we going to do for the remainder of the season here. So, for me, I'm going to be in full evaluation mode. I'm not going to bother doing a pregame video. All I'm going to do is do a video after the conclusion of each game and as and along with doing the Lone Star show with Dallas Cowboy Fan 1980 we'll just be evaluating what we're seeing from the team do we see any growth do we see any you know failure to progress stuff like that so we'll talk about that so that's going to be what we're doing for the remainder of the season now in terms of what's going on now the Cowboys sitting at three and eight you know it, it sucks obviously I mean we're still in the thick of it for the division race which is weird when you're a three and eight team you usually should be out of this thing but no we're still in it uh, so you know and and there is still a path for dallas to make the playoffs and you might be thinking space why do you even bother saying that i understand that but at the same time that pathway still exists you have baltimore upcoming then you have the cincinnati Bengals, then the 49ers the eagles then the giants to close out the year now, I'm not saying Dallas is going to make the playoffs. I doubt that, given with what's been going on. But I do believe that we need to understand um, there are a couple positives we can take away from this season. And I think that, I look, I understand that it's been a tough year for us all, given the circumstances we're in, and then also to see the team struggle with the new head coach because we thought all he needed to do was come in, tweak a little things, and we'd be A-OK, -okay, myself included, which I was wrong. What we have to understand is is that as a team we are looking very you know we're, we're we're not how would i word it we're not there yet we're still in a state of flux going from the previous coaching staff to the new coaching staff in terms of what they want to do and it really wasn't until the first philadelphia eagles game where we really started to kind of see the team turn a corner defensively and things started to kind of change for a little bit for the better and so you look at the games that happened after that so dallas sitting at two and five they go into philadelphia and they're leading at halftime with the field goals they really should have gotten a touchdown or two or really a touchdown in that game given with how they've been playing and how philadelphia has been playing but so they drop the two and six and then they go into next week's game with garrett gilbert at quarterback he nearly wins them a game versus the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, unfortunately, due to you know mental miscues by some of our players and a couple other mistakes, we don't get that win. And then you go into the next week, or the bye week, and then you come out of the bye week beating Minnesota, and then you nearly win against Washington. I don't care what the final score says. That was a four-point game that nearly could have gone Dallas's way if they didn't make certain mistakes from the coaching staff and other things so i want that to be emphatically clear that dallas was in position to win that game and honestly they could possibly be sitting at five and six right now at the worst six and five like the, the way that things have gone i do believe dallas could be winning the division right now if things bounce a certain way so if you look into the details of each specific game i'm not trying to sit here and sugarcoat and say like okay um like Things that happened in that game, those games were bad. That ended up being those losses for a reason. But I just don't want to sit here and be fully negative because I feel like that's not a productive thing to do. Don't get me wrong. In evalu when you're evaluating stuff, you have to be able to point out these negatives. But also you need to point out, okay, what's been going good? Well, the defense has been playing better. We've been seeing them get some turnovers. We've been seeing them, you know, play a little bit better in terms of not, you know, completely folding. Uh, the offense, given the situation, has been decent. I mean, you have Andy Dolan, you have a backup quarterback, your offensive line shot the hell. Uh, you still have your receiving options. I mean, you know, uh, Dalton Schultz, he's been a shocker because of how well he's been playing. You know, uh, you get to see a guy in Connor McGovern finally get some playing time, and he looks like a solid piece to build off of, um, or rather, you know, gives you an option. 
On defense, you see Donovan Wilson get some playing time, and he's been showing out, and all this other stuff. So you look at what's been going on with the Cowboys, and I would love to see Reggie Robinson get some playing time along with Bradley and I. I don't know what the plan's going to be. Um, you know, and Randy Gregory, he's been starting to get his act together in terms of like getting into a groove. So the way I look at it is this. Dallas has a couple games. Well, we have five games left. And we have, we, we do have some time to see what this team has to offer going into next year. So, with that being said, in the offseason, Dallas is not going to have a lot of wiggle room to do stuff. They're going to have to probably restructure, let people go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I think what might happen is, well, first things first, the, the elephant in the room, what's going to happen with Dak Prescott, they're going to give him... Either the franchise tag at the or they're going to give him the franchise tag if they can't get the long term deal. He's going to remain in Dallas for the next year, regardless of how you like the guy or not. I don't know how you don't like him, but that's just you. Um, but they're either going to have to give him, they're going to either give him the franchise tag or they're going to give him a long term deal. One of the two is going to happen. Um, and then outside of that, whatever moves Dallas makes will be hard because. They waited all this time, and now they're going to end up having to pay for the quarterback. But again, there could be players that retire. There could be players that, um, you know, you, you get restructured their deals. There are things that can happen for Dallas to make cap space. So whatever happens in the offseason is going to be, I mean, obviously with Dak most likely coming back, like a, like a 99% chance coming back in 2021, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it, that they're going to go with someone on defense, most likely, given their draft position. If Dallas is selecting third, or third, I think that there is an incentive to trade down. This has been a weird year, obviously, given the circumstances, but more importantly, you're starting to see a lot of uh, quarterback prospects start trending upward, and the good part about that is that with that, going on and you having a top five possibly top three pick depending on what you do for the remainder of the year you could easily trade that pick for more draft picks and e with even Dallas getting a ton of draft compensation picks this year they are in line to possibly trade that first round pick and get someone else um of value that they can get in the teens or whatever. I don't know where they would be picking. But I will say, though, I wouldn't be shocked if Dallas holds the pick and takes someone with that selection. Now, the question is, is who would I want? Well, the thing is, is there are a lot of good options in... Um, how would I word this? There are a lot of good options for Dallas to pick. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The problem is, is are they going to reach with that selection? Now, Dallas has done very well with their first round picks. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. They've done fantastic. My only question is, is will they manage their draft capital properly? Now, if they take a linebacker, for example, if it is Micaiah Parsons, which I would say as of this juncture is most likely the pick, if they could not trade down my whole thing is is that that would mean one of two well that would mean one thing Jalen is no longer on this football team I I don't see a scenario in which the Dallas Cowboys take a linebacker when they have Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch regardless of how Jalen's been playing I don't see how you can take a linebacker that high given you know, given what resources you've already put into your linebacking core. And so if they do take Micaiah Parsons, my expectation is that, okay, this guy, um, <laughs> this guy's getting, you know, Micaiah Parsons is getting taken because someone, there, there's a vacuum there. Now, in terms of cornerback, I think that Dallas will go uh, with Patrick Sertan probably, given the circumstances of, they don't bring back Cheeto or Jordan Lewis, or they only bring back one, but they need someone else to fill that role. And again, Trevon Diggs has been fantastic given his playing time and given what he's been able to do. And I understand he's hurt, 
But I do think that it wouldn't be absurd for the Cowboys to take someone that high. I mean, it, 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 the thing that bothers me is that if you take a good player, that's awesome. And no one's going to care about that. Like, this is exactly kind of how I felt with Leighton Vander Esch. Leighton Vander Esch, I didn't have an issue with the player. I had an issue with the draft capital. And to be, you know, with terms of you could probably have traded down for the guy and still got him, whether it be a couple picks. So, with that being said, I don't know what the move's going to be. You know, I, I would say that if Dallas has... The higher the pick that Dallas has, the more leverage they have in terms of getting a good draft pick. Because the way I look at it is that you have Trevor Lawrence, who's going to go number one overall regardless of what he does it's, it's when he declares. You have now um, Zach Wilson from BYU. You also have Justin Fields. And you have Trey, uh, Trey Lance. And... There's there's probably a couple other that I'm missing, but the point is is that you're seeing these quarterback prospects beginning to rise to the top, and considering the awkward year that we are in, I think that you are more likely to have some leverage, you know. And I'm not trying to say that because of what's going on with the Rona, that's going to inherently help the Cowboys. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not. That's, what I, that's not what I'm implying, but. What I am trying to say is, well, it kind of is in a sense, but not like a full on, oh my God, it's an event. No, what I mean is, is that if you, the combine isn't going to be a thing because of this situation still going on and it's just pro days uh, for each individual player, who knows what can happen. So I don't want to go on forever. So. My whole thing is, is as of right now, I do believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to take a defensive player in this draft. And um, if I recall, Mike McCarthy, um, I'm not sure if this is correct, but his after his first full, or his first pick, I should say, his first pick um, as um, head coach for the Green Bay Packers, was I believe AJ Hawk or it was one of those picks because I believe he got there in 2006 so yeah they, they were able to get a guy in AJ Hawk and um you know and he he was a productive player for them so the point I'm trying to get at is don't be shocked if Dallas takes a player like Micaiah Parsons or Patrick or like they're going to need blue chip prospects to help this defense out and if, if Mike Nolan is still here or they go out and get another guy, they're going to need to get defensive player help any way they can. And given the circumstances, if they can have a replica in terms of value or if they go best play, I don't know. So the point I'm trying to get at here, I do believe as of right now, my bold prediction is if the team stays the standard. They don't get rid of Jalen Smith. I do think Patrick Sertan is probably going to end up being a Cowboy. But depending on what happens with Jalen Smith, if there was a rumor circulating like a week or two ago where, oh, they might ask him for a pay cut or cut him. If that does happen, it's going to be Micaiah Parsons. I highly doubt Dallas trades the pick. They're just going to take him. And I don't think that would be a smart move because I feel like, you, you know, getting a guy like him would be a bit of a reach. So there's that. So I don't want to go on forever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave down in the comments how you feel about the team, this, that, and the third. What do you think might happen in the offseason? And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.